Now, a quick disclaimer before we start would be that I've not actually heard the term innocent springtails used to describe species in the James Orchard cellar before. And I can sometimes be a bit against using vernacular names, particularly in the place of scientific names with less studied groups like flies and beetles. However, springtails do need all the public engagement help that I can get, and my name choice is partly inspired by a woman's day who, in 1924 or 1925, he published in the, in the Proceedings of the Bristol Natural Society that Orchicella fluorescens, one of the rarest species, was the most magnificent springtail. I think that's a great way to describe the springtails in this genus. Now, another point which I think ought to be addressed is what exactly are springtails? Now, springtails used, used to be considered insects because they have six legs. However, they're now in a different class, the class Entognatha, because unlike insects, which have external mouth parts, uh, springtails actually have internal mouth parts. Now, they can usually be found in places like uh, decaying organic matter, so like leaf litter or right within the soil, or on the trunks of trees, for example, um, amongst low vegetation, and even on the seashore, and plenty of other habitats as well. They're usually quite small, with the smallest species in the UK reaching a maximum of 0.25 millimetres when fully grown. However, these fantastic orchard cellar species, which I'm going to be looking for today, can actually reach up to 6 millimetres, which is pretty massive in terms of springtails. With regard to the British Orchicella fauna, there are three species that one could find in the lowlands. Of these, Orchicella villosa and Orchicella cincta are very common, while Orchicella fluorescens is very scarce. The first of these species that I'm going to try to find is villosa. In my experience, one of the best ways to find the species is by looking under rocks in a woodland floor, with the springtails hiding within the crevices. By lifting up this rock here, I was able to find this adult specimen staying very still, attempting to avoid detection. Next up is Orchicella cincta. This species is one of the most common species in leaf litter, can be easily found by sieving the leaves with a bonsai sieve onto a white tray like this. In dry weather, Orchicella cincta and other springtails often move further down to find more moist organic matter, but this species should still be fairly easy to find. Finally, we have Orchicella fluorescens. It is so infrequently found that it went over 80 years without a confirmed sighting, between 1925 and 2009. Since then, it has only been found at very few sites in the southeast, so when I found a couple of fluorescents at this site a few weeks ago, I was incredibly excited. While fluorescents also reside in leaf litter, I found those two by sweeping very low vegetation and hair cap moss with a sweep net. Today, it took quite a bit of sweeping to achieve my target, but I was eventually rewarded with this beautiful springtail. Now that I have found all of the targets, I'll now go through how to identify them. The genus Orchicella can be separated from all other British springtail genera by having six segments of the antennae, which are all of varying lengths. This is probably most easily shown on this fluorescent specimen on the right here. It has a tiny basal segment, then the second segment here, third, fourth, fifth, and the sixth at the apex. Now this can be asymmetric on even one specimen, so as you can see here on this on this fluorescence, the apex of the, the apical segment of the right antenna is just completely missing. Now this could be due to the antenna being damaged and then growing back differently to the other antenna um, and factors like that. And obviously so therefore this uh, feature of antennal segments can be quite difficult to judge in the field. So just the general size uh, reaching up to six millimeters and the distinct patterning on the body can be quite a useful feature used to distinguish this genus from, from other springtails you might find. So for example, springtails in the family Tomaceridae are a similar size but are just completely dark and they also have longer antennae which curl up to at least some degree. Now on the left here you can see Orchicella villosa. Now this can be distinguished by having its bodily pigment sort of arranged in discrete patches rather than in uh, distinct bands or longitudinal lines. And Orchicella cincta, which is the second one here, has a very distinct broad black bar on the third abdominal segment, and often sort of a, a pale strip of pigment on the posterior margin of the, of the second abdominal segment, which sort of makes that broad black bar more distinct. Now, this can vary in intensity, and, and the pigment across the whole body can vary as well, depending on age or sex. And in fluorescence, another specimen of which is on the right here, this can also show a broad black bar. However, if you look closely, this is always on the fourth abdominal segment rather than on a third, which is here. And what Orchicella cincta always lacks and fluorescence always possesses are these longitudinal lines, which don't vary depending on age or sex. Now, 
If you have a specimen with longitudinal lines, like Clovescens shows here, it's also worth checking that you don't have Orchicella quinquae fasciata. Now, this is a heat-loving southern species recorded in the UK a handful of times. Quinquae fasciata always has five longitudinal stripes, uh, with one midline stripe, which Orchicella clovescens never has. It also has stripes along the margins along there. And finally, if you, have a, if you live in a montane area, it is worth having Orchicella alticola on your radar. This species is dark pigment on the third abdominal segment, like O. Cincta, but also a block of dark pigment on the posterior half of the fourth segment, and sort of blocks of pigment on the earlier abdominal and thoracic segments too. Perhaps even more distinct is that if you look at the antennae of Orticola, it's very poorly pigmented. So as you can see in the Cincta specimen, it has this sort of bit or a little stripe of um, dark pigment on the antennae here. This wouldn't be present on Orticola, so it's a good way of checking whether you have Orticola rather than Cincta. If you're able to find, identify and record any Orticella springtails, the Columbula recording scheme would be very happy to receive your records. Their details can be found on the Biological Records Centre website. Thanks for watching.